Welcome back to our Hector Challenge series. Every now and then, we send Hector to Smurf in low elo to prove that you can win even under the most strenuous of circumstances. Our last challenge was a complete breeze for him, so we decided to make things extra difficult for him this time around. Let's jump right into it. All right, so what's the challenge this time? Well, every time Hector returns to base, for whatever reason, be it recalling, dying, or just healing, then he must sell his most expensive item. Afterwards, he's free to use the gold he gets to rebuy whatever he wants. This may not immediately sound that difficult, but once you get into the game, you'll see just how frustrating this was to play around. And as always, here's the ground rules for every challenge he undertakes. Number one, he must play ranked. This time, he was in a Platinum 4 lobby, a bit higher than we usually make him play. Number two, he must play an item-dependent champion. He's made challenges easier on himself in the past by being clever, so we've banned anything like Tarek or Lulu. We allowed him to choose Nocturne for this one. And number three, he only gets one shot at it. Obviously, we never let him try any challenge more than once, otherwise there's no point. On to the game. As we said, Hector is playing Nocturne into a Jace. Normally, melee players tend to panic a bit against a matchup like this, but these lanes tend to be quite easy to play against in low elo. I'm gonna let this guy push into me because something you can do against a ton of champions like this, Jace, uh, Jace, Quinn, Cannon, stuff like that, is that they're actually really, really hard to play in solo queue. Maybe I shouldn't be queuing there. Um, they're really hard to play in solo queue because you kind of have to avoid ganks. And trading actually takes skill. Like, see, I didn't even use abilities and this guy got out traded because he jumped into a wave. So generally, if you just let them shove, they're just going to find ways to lose the lane. We frequently mention this as the counterplay for melees versus ranged matchups, and it always seems so effective. Which may leave you wondering, what can the ranged player even do when the enemy is just giving up CS and playing safe? Well, if your opponent is playing overly safe like Hector is doing, you need to learn to abuse slow push crashes. If your opponent lets you build up a huge wave, then they're just handing you free recalls. The most dangerous one that we always bring up being the Cheater Recall, where you crash on the third wave and base. Then you punish them with an item advantage when you return. Or even more punishing, you could just build up a huge crash at 3 minutes and 15 seconds into the game. Then you can just go into the river and use your 2v1 advantage to secure both Scuttle Crabs for your jungler. Congratulations, you just won the game by tilting the enemy jungler off the face of the earth. Instead, low elo players just push, and when they aren't able to land any harass, they end up feeling completely lost. The lane is totally even. In fact, Hector has the lead because of the bounce back slow push building up for him now, despite doing virtually nothing. This is why playing patiently is so OP in low elo. Well, this is pretty nice. Uh, the one thing about this challenge, though, is I could just force a recall here, but I don't want to because I'd have to sell my Doran's Blade, <laughs> and I don't think I'd be very ahead. Like, I would actually come out behind if I played correctly here, so. Like we said, this challenge is definitely more annoying than it may initially seem. If he were to base, selling his Doran's Blade would cost him nearly a kill's worth of gold by how much he'd be losing by selling it. So he stays instead, and hopes that he can get a greedier recall timing with more gold. Skipping forward a bit, Hector has done nothing but play safe and do nothing. As he said, the enemy player will eventually find a way to lose themselves, and he hard punishes the Jace for going melee range into a Nocturne. After a kill like this, you should almost always base. He's now sitting on a ton of gold, and if we look at the map, bot lane is dead and ganking a top Shaco with the Kale is quite unreliable. But he needs to be super greedy with his bases when it comes to this challenge. So he roams top and very narrowly scores a Shaco kill. This is definitely not the correct play, and even he would admit he got lucky since he barely killed him. With no options left after the kill, he chooses to finally recall and ends up being quite powerful, despite having to sell his Doran's Blade. After getting back to lane, not much happens for a while. Jace having died begins to play super safe. Meanwhile, Top is technically ungankable, and his bot lane is perma-shoving. These situations just lead to Hector farming mid for a long time, unable to really do much else. Sadly for him, this is basically a no recalling challenge. When everyone is too safe to kill, good recall timings are perfect for getting ahead. At 1400 gold, he can base, buy Duskblade, and be prepared for any engagement that happens on the map, where he could one-shot anyone he comes into contact with. Instead, he's forced to stay and not really get much done. And we're starting to see a trend. 
Since he can't make the correct macro play, he opts for riskier plays like these, where he baits Braum into ganking for his Warwick to come and counter gank. That was a huge play, putting him super far ahead of Jace, and the laning phase ends soon thereafter, so let's skip on over to the mid game. A dragon fight occurs a bit later, which his team handily loses. There's not much you can do in situations like these, so he just elects to go push bottom afterwards as an assassin type champion should. As he's explaining something though, he ends up making his first mistake of the game and gets caught out and dies. This is where the challenge really starts being problematic for him. No, I didn't want to base. So I was saying I didn't want to use my mana because I don't want to base because I don't want to do stupid challenge. <laughs> and now I have to do it. Okay. So I sell it. Is that how that works? Yeah, okay, so I sell it. Then I buy it and then I... I have the same items I did before. <laughs> ah, that's actually so frustrating. Basically, each time he recalls, he needs to sell his mythic and rebuy it, which is a loss of around 950 gold. It was already a nuisance playing around it during the early game, but it's much more punishing the longer the game goes on. Any mistake is going to be brutal this game, but let's see if he can work his magic as he always does. Later on into the game, he's pushing bottom, then begins to rotate toward mid. So someone should be down there collecting that. If they're not, I'm not going to force an issue. So I can just take my hands off my keyboard, okay? Now my hands are back on my keyboard. Because if no one went bottom, then we're winning by doing nothing. Because they're just missing a ton of waves. But because I forced Jace bottom, maybe we can look for something, you know? Oh, maybe the enemy is stupid, let's see. No? Okay. Then we just go back bottom. Shortly after, he's able to pick off the Jace pushing alone and scores an easy kill. But we do want to thoroughly discuss the point he just made. We see this so often when we look at low elo assassins playing the game. They'll do the correct thing by pushing in side waves, but then they'll overforce a fight in mid lane right after. Problem is, if no one reacted to your shove, you're just forcing a coin flip 5v5. We all know how we feel about coin flip 5v5s by now. Basically, you should just be able to recognize when you're getting a guaranteed advantage. Then, just be aware that sometimes taking your hands off the keyboard is much more consistent than feeling forced into doing something you don't have to do. The kill on Jace and a bunch of sideways later puts him extremely far ahead once again. He's sitting on a ton of gold, but again, he has to plan his bases carefully. His goal was to wait until he had enough gold to get two completed items. Unfortunately... Ah, uh, missing my Q there might kill me. It did. And that's where the game began spiraling completely out of control. He completely changes his mindset now and switches his Duskblade to Prowler's Claw, which is a good mentality to have. When you're behind in items, you should build raw damage so that you can actually kill enemy players. Unfortunately, he gets massively outplayed moments later as well. As he's defending the base from the fed Shaco, when he turns to kill him, the clone actually detonates as he's mid-air flying toward Shaco, putting Hector low enough to be instantly killed. Brutal. Like we said, each time he dies or bases, it's another 950 gold lost, and things just get worse and worse and worse until... If I sell this, I'm just gonna have these items. <laughs> I literally, I won't even have a mythic. Honestly, I don't... I feel bad. I lost. A uh, challenge fail. Let's see if I can maybe bring this game back. Finally, we managed to take the cocky jerk down. He played out the game normally from there to not troll his team, and thankfully his kill was a monster who hard carried the game eventually. This challenge was definitely a bit different from the others though. As we constantly mentioned, he kept having to do odd macro plays constantly. In other challenges, he was annoyed at his circumstances, but he could still play exactly how he wanted to, and was able to overcome most situations. This time, the challenge forced him to rely on his mechanics more often than not, and as we saw, a single mistake was catastrophic. Even Faker dies to gold for brands from time to time. Mechanical mistakes are simply inevitable. Hopefully this just goes to show yet again how important proper macro is, and how there's only so far mechanics can take you when climbing. And remember, if you want to see Hector's suffering in all of its glory, the full game is featured on our Smurf Commentaries page. We upload at least 10 new commentaries from our Challenger players every week, where they show you exactly how to carry yourself out of low elo in real time as they play. 
On top of that, they also respond to every single question that is posted within seven days of the video's release. That and so much more is available over at Skillcapped. So check us out after this. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this guide. As always, if you have any ideas for challenges, let us know in the comments below as we always draw inspiration for these challenges from there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.